Hi, welcome. This is Clemens at Elector. In this video, we will have a look at the KiCad's PCB design tool, PCB New. PCB New lets you design a professional quality printed circuit boards like these. In the tutorial on EE schema, we came up with this design, and now it is time to draw a PCB for it. The PCB design tool in KiCad is PCB New, and you can access it in two ways, either by using this button from the upper toolbar, Run PCB New to layout printed circuit board, or you can do it from the KiCad control panel by using this button. So let's press this button. This is the sheet that we will draw in. On the left, like an EE schema, we have some generic options like switching on and off the grid, uh, setting the units, rendering options for copper bars, copper planes, uh, and some other uh, things. On the top, we have a toolbar with uh, print, save and zoom buttons. There's also this important button, the board setup button. And here we are some uh, tools that we will we'll need that are again sort of organized in the workflow order from uh, import nested to uh, design uh, rules check. So on the right we have the PCB drawing tools. Uh, this is the menu that you will uh, use the most of course. Um, draw traces, add footprints, uh, draw field zones, these are copper planes, polygons, etc. So here on the right we have all the layers that are available for the board. The layers with the checkbox are activated. You can hide them by unchecking them or checking them will make them visible. The layer that you will draw in, the current selected layer, is indicated by this blue triangle in front of it. You can select it by clicking in front of a layer. You can also select it from here, from the upper toolbar in this drop down list. Uh, a word about notation, you can see F and B. In the KiCad, the board has a front side and a back side. In other uh, PCB drawing programs, uh, that would be uh, top and bottom. Okay, before we can start drawing the PCB, we will set up the board. You can use the board setup button from here or do it from the file menu. In the board setup, we define the layers that are available for the board. As you can see, there are many layers. You can check or uncheck them here. You can change the type of the board, two layers with only parts on the front side or on the back side or on both sides, four layers. Uh, we just leave this on the default value. The design rules are important. You have to check these with your board house. I got the values from their website. Uh, these are the values for a standard board, uh, nothing special. In this case, this is a class 6C. We don't allow blind and buried vias and we don't allow micro vias, so we don't have to set up this. And on the net classes we have to set up the clearance field, which is 0.15 in my case. As you can see there are no track width uh, defined, nor vias or anything else, so you have to do that yourself. You can do that by clicking the plus button and then just add a track width. Since you have to do this for every board, this is quite tedious. There is a little trick. If you do this once and then save the project, you can import the project uh, in another project like here and you have all the settings in one go. So I did that before. I made a template project in my presets project. Select all the things that I want from that project and then I do import settings and there we, I have all my track width in one go. This also sets the design rules and the layers, but I use the same layers as before. A word about the net classes, you can define other net classes. I never do that, I always leave it on the default, but that's up to you. And now is a good time to save your project and make a copy of it so you can use it later as a template project. For that you go to your project folder and you look for your .pro file, here it is, myproject.pro, and you save it somewhere. From then on you can use this to load your, uh, set up your project quickly. Here is the page setup, the page outline. Customizing the page is not done in the same way as in EE schema. You do it from the file menu and then you go to page settings where you can set some fields and the paper size and things like that. To change the color of the outline, which is quite dark, a dark red on black, it is more complicated. You go to uh, 
items on the copper layer and here you have your worksheet. And then when you right click on the color of your worksheet, you can change the render color of your worksheet and you can choose a new color from the color picker. I want it vanilla. There we go. Okay, before we start drawing, I uh, prefer uh, hiding all the layers that I don't need. So that is all these adhesive paste, silk screen I will need, the mask I don't need, this I don't need, this I don't need, this one I don't need, this one I don't need. The edge cuts, you have to keep this layer because that's the board outline layer. The component uh, courtyard is the space occupied by the component and it's uh, slightly bigger than what you can see on the component print or the silk screen. So you leave it activated. So we will now first draw the board outline. For this we have to select the edge cuts layer here on the right. You can select it by clicking in front of it. Or you can select it from the drop down list on the top toolbar like this. We then select a line drawing tool and we draw a rectangle. Our board is simple, it will be a rectangle. If you have a complicated board outline it may be easier to draw it in a uh, mechanical design uh, program and then import it into KiCad. Uh, the KiCad drawing functions are a bit limited. For complicated shapes uh, it would be easier to import a DXF file or something. Okay, when done uh, press escape. Now if you want to change the outline, uh, for some reason it is uh, difficult to select board edges. I don't know why. If you double click on them nothing happens. Sometimes it does. It's easiest to do it this way and then use the right click on the mouse to open this uh, pop-up window. Here you can see what you can do with an edge or with an object. Move, rotate, flip, uh, etc. You have the move exactly option which allows you to type in uh, the coordinates where you want the object to go to. We leave our outline like this and we will import now the components. In KiCad it is up to you to import the netlist that you created with the EE schema. There are two ways to do this. You can use the uh, load netlist button from the top toolbar. And then you browse to the netlist file that you want to import. Which would be this one. You do update PCB. There you go. Close. And you can place the parts. Another way to do things is by clicking the update PCB from schematic button. You can leave the default options uh, at the first try. You will get the same thing, update PCB. You don't have to load the netlist yourself, it will do it automatically for you and then update the PCB. We now have a block of uh, selected parts. Uh, we can now move them around. You can move a component with the M uh, hotkey, as in EE schema. The problem is on this you have several layers and if you hover on the wrong position you will not move the component but for instance it's reference. So for this there is a special um, filter option here. If you click right on a part and then you go to the select filter selection then you can say activate or deactivate the things that you want the select tool to select. So if you don't want uh, for now we don't want tracks, vias don't want text items to be selected, we want drawings to be selected, we don't want the board outline to be selected and we want zones. So this makes uh, selecting parts a bit easier. Okay, so let's uh, move our parts. Like I said, with the M hotkey you can pick up a part and move it. Then you have the R hotkey to rotate it. Okay, well that uh, looks uh, nice. Uh, we see now that the resistors R1 and R2 are a bit big, so we'll, uh, we might as well change their footprint. You can do this by uh, clicking the E hotkey, which will open the properties. And then you can go to change footprint. Another way to do things is um, right click on the part and then change footprint from the pop-up menu. Uh, our two resistors, we only have two resistors, they have the same uh, footprint and we want to change both. So we can change this filter, change footprint with identifier and we change them into something shorter like this one which is uh, 10 millimeters long. We double click to accept it and we do apply. And as you can see now we have smaller resistors. Let's replace them like so. 
So I have uh, finished uh, placing my components. Uh, now let's have a look at the K1. Uh, this is the connector that we uh, invented ourselves and for which we draw, drew our own uh, schematic symbol. Now let's say for the sake of argument that this uh, footprint is not what we want and that we have to uh, modify it. Well actually that is pretty easy. Just hover the mouse cursor over it and then open in footprint editor or control E. Okay, there we have it. First we will have to create a new library in which we will save our modified uh, component. Uh, let's call it uh, my library. Uh, we make it a global one, why not? So now we have a library, now we can add, modify this, uh, this footprint. We don't like this uh, pin for instance, its shape is oval, but we want it to be round. So make it a circular. Okay, this one, and let's say that we have a shield on this component that was not drawn here, uh, which has uh, two pins to attach it to the ground plane. So we will add some pads to it. Let's say that the pads are supposed to go here and here. Now, since these two pads are connected to the same shield, we can uh, edit this footprint to give it the same um, pin number as the other one, so they will be connected automatically. There we go. The courtyard, which is this white rectangle, no longer includes all the pins, so we will make it bigger. So now this is the courtyard of our component. We will not allow other components to be placed within this area. Okay, well let's say that this is it. We save the part to our library. Save, reclose the editor. And we now have a new part. Another thing that we need is uh, mounting holes. We don't have mounting holes for our board. We will do that in the schematic because we want to connect the mounting holes to the uh, ground uh, plane or the ground uh, net. So we open the uh, EE schema here. There it is. And we know how to do this now. We load components and we look for mounting holes. They are in here. Mounting hole, there we have a mounting hole pad is a good one because we can connect it to the ground like that. And we want four of these, of course. So we copy it. There we go. Now we have to run annotate again. And we switch back to uh, PCB and we, we update the PCB from schematic. Oh, we forgot to assign a footprint to the mounting holes. So we have to do that first. F. Alt key F to open the footprint uh, br library browser. Um, let's say we have an M3, 3.2 millimeters. Okay, we, we another way to do this is we can copy this now to change these. Okay, uh, we switch back to the PCB and we do update from schematic. This is what he's going to do. As you can see, it will also change the footprints from R1 and R2 back to what we had before. We don't want that, so we have to update the schematic first to avoid this from happening. Let's use the footprint assignment tool for that, this one. Okay, we select R1 and R2, and from the resistors, we choose the Nice, the package that we have now, which was a little bit shorter. This is the one that we have now and we wanted this one. Okay, so now we have the 10.16 millimeter horizontal type. Okay, we accept this. We save our schematic also, of course. Go back to the PCB, update the PCB from schematic and now we see that we only add mounting holes. Okay, update PCB. Close, and there we have our mounting holes. Let's place them now on the board. Okay, nice. Um, now we have to uh, correct the board outline. And that's our board. Uh, we changed the footprints of R1 and R2 in uh, PCB New. And we did not uh, backport this change uh, to EE schema. Uh, well, I showed you how to do it uh, manually, but there is also a way to do it uh, more or less automatically in a fashion similar to the uh, update PCB from schematic. 
in EE schema, we have here this button, the back import symbol footprint association fields from the .com back import file created by PCB new. That's a very long help, but it's useful as it tells you that you must export the footprints to a comp file. You do that with the file export. Then you have the footprint association.cmp file. Okay, we save it here. Now we can use this button. There we have our comp file. The visibility settings that we keep what we have, so we don't change anything. And now this footprint should be... It's a 10.16 millimeter, so yes, indeed, it is the new footprint. Going back to the PCB, we can now update the PCB from schematic. And as you can see, there is nothing to update. Everything is okay. So now with uh, all the components placed, the uh, mounting holes in place and the board outline set as we want it, uh, we can start routing. For that we uh, select a layer, we start on the back layer or bottom layer, we select route tracks and that's basically all you have to do to get started. Back here, select the track, but as you can see this track is pretty thin. I want a bigger track, so we remove it with Ctrl Z and first choose a track width from our list that we created when we imported the project file. Draw again and I have a nice track. As you can see it creates a 45 degree angle automatically. Now if you don't like how this angle is drawn, you can use this uh, switch track posture option and it will change the angle, the starting angle. The net name is uh, displayed on the trace. You can do a trace here. If you want to force point you click. There you go. Now if we want to continue on the top layer, the front layer. Do that here, we take this signal. As you can see it avoids the obstacles. That's automatic. If we do this on the bottom layer, it will look like this. This is called walk around. The way this behaves is uh, set here in the route interactive router settings. It's now in walk around mode, change it to shove mode. When you shove, as you can see, it will push the existing track away. And you can force your way through it. There is also a highlight collisions mode. You just draw your track and it will highlight all the problems your trace uh, encounters, which you will have to fix manually. Let's switch back to walk around mode. Okay, now let's have a look at how uh, vias work. If you want to change the side, for instance here you want to change to the other side. You can press the V hotkey for via, then click and then you will continue automatically on the, on the other side. If you want the via here, just press V, click and continue in green. There you go. It is also possible to change the layer of a trace. You can hover the mouse over it and then press E. And then here you can change the layer. But it will not place a via automatically. You can place a via from here. And look carefully, we have a little cross where I place the via, a little cross. And we have the unrouted here, which is in 16. If I place the via here, the cross is gone and the unrouted has gone to 15. So this has created a connection. Delete this one, we just lose delete. Up. Delete the whole trace. So use the forward slash hotkey to change the track posture, like so. Now I want this a different width, this is a power select here, you can type something in 0.7 for instance. As you can see that changes the width of this segment. If you want to drag something, you use the hotkey G. You can also use the hotkey move, but that will move the whole trace. 
And I want to use a plane for the ground connections. You do that with a uh, filled zone in the keycat. Select filled zone from the right toolbar. Click a starting point on the board. Then you choose the net you want the plane to be connected to. Then you start drawing the plane. Double click when done. And there we are. Uh, to unfill filled zones you press the Ctrl B uh, hotkey. And with the B hotkey you can fill it again. Now for some reason the rat's nest uh, stays connected to these uh, mounting holes. If we look at the statistics then we see that we have unrouted four. However if you zoom they seem to be connected. So how is this possible? If you open the footprint of the mounting hole in the footprint editor with the uh, Ctrl E hotkey and then look at its properties by using the E hotkey uh, then we can see that the type of the hole is actually an NPTH or non-plated uh, true hole type which means that there is no connection between the bottom and top copper. So we have the wrong footprint for our mounting hole. Therefore we switch to EE schema to change the footprint of our mounting holes. We will use this the footprint uh, library, assign footprint tool for this. We select our four mounting holes. We select the mounting holes on the left. So this is the one we have and we want one with a pad. So we use this one instead. Okay. We switch to the PCB. We update PCB from schematic. Set change footprint, update PCB, close. And we see the rat's nest has gone, now we have zero unrouted connections, all our connections are routed and the PCB is more or less ready. We can have a look at the PCB in the 3D, we can see that in the 3D viewer. This looks really nice, except that we don't have a potentiometer, we don't have a battery holder and of course our own connector, uh, we don't have a model for that either. Okay, now we can, uh, for instance, place the texts all properly. So BT1, we can leave that here. We can use the move function to move all the references. No, oh, we don't want to move that. We don't want the whole references to be visible. We can hide them by clicking or unchecking visible from the properties tab. Now if we only look at the silk screen layer, we hide the copper layers. I like to do this with the mask. So there is no text on masks. We can add more text, you can never have too much text on a PCB. So we add PCB, we choose a layer, top silk screen, top component print. And we select the text on copper layer tool from the right toolbar. We click on the board and we type our text. So we can write some text on the board to identify our board. My first keycat PCB. There we go. We can also add a logo to the, to the board. A CE logo, maybe this one is better, and uh, waste bin, do not put this board in the waste bin. We can put that on the bottom side, we don't want it on this side. Edit. So we change the side of this board on the back side. Well, there it is. We also need the dimensions for the board, we can use the Add dimension tool for that, and we can put that on a fab layer, which we must activate first, of course. So for that you click one point, you click the second point, and then you place the dimension. Dimensions are very precise, uh, th three decimals for millimeters. So we may fine tune some uh, parts, let's uh, make this text a little bit bigger, we use this uh, for this the uh, 
e-hotkey to add access the properties of the text. And then we change the width to say two millimeters to make it a bit bigger. Okay, now we have to run the design rule check. For that you click the little bug on the top toolbar. Leave all to default and run DRC. It's not run DMC, but run DRC. Uh, we have no problems, we have no unconnected items, so this is all good. This means that we can move on to generating our Gerber files that we can send to the PCB manufacturer. You do this from the file menu, but not from fabrication outputs, but from plot. So on the plot window, here you have the plot format. Gerber, Postscript, SVG, DXF, HPGL or PDF. We go for Gerber. We want the copper layers. We don't want the paste layers. We want silk screen. Uh, we want the mask. Um, and we want the board outline. We can keep the default settings. We will use extended X2 format. And so let's plot. That's very quick and that's done. We also want drill files, of course, because you also need holes. We do this in the Xland format. We leave this all on default and click generate drill file. You can also generate a map file so you know which hole or which diameter is where on the board. Uh, when done, we click close. Now we also want uh, PDF outputs for uh, some of these layers, uh, especially the fab layer, we want that one. So we plot again, but this time PDF. There we go. Now we have the Gerber files and now we can check if they are okay. For that we go to the uh, KiCad control center and we open the Gerber viewer. There we go. And we must load the Gerber files of course. So we go to the file, open Gerber files. Our project, you can select multiple files. So we select everything. Okay, I selected a little bit too much. And this is the what the Gerber files look like. Copper seems okay. This is the solder mask. This is the top copper or the front copper. This is the front silk screen and in white we also have the back silk screen here. So this all looks uh, fine and we can send uh, the files to our board manufacturer. And our first uh, PCB will arrive in uh, a few days. So while we are waiting for our board manufacturer to produce our board, we can uh, keep ourselves busy with the components that have to go on it. For that we will export a BOM file as a CSV file. There are some more things you can export. Output a pick and place file, you can output a drill file, or footprint report file, other netlist types. So that's it uh, for now. Uh, in this video you learned how to use KiCad's PCB New to design a printed circuit board or PCB uh, like this. Uh, I showed you how to set up the board, how to place components, how to connect them with traces, tracks, vias and planes. Um, we added text to the board, uh, other uh, board elements like dimensions and logos. We ran the design rule checker to see if everything was fine and we generated the production files, uh, the Gerber and Exelon uh, drill files needed by the board manufacturer. I hope you found it interesting and uh, thank you for watching.